Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Hey y'all, Donnie Keith here, aka Auntie Peaches from the Auntie's Radio Show, also on The Voice of Reason. I'm here to say that ever since my man started taking A-game, he's been on top of his A-game. When I say A-game, I mean his A-game. He's more focused. He's definitely working out more. His attitude is better. And he's not complaining of all over body aches due to poor blood circulation. Because A-game provides great blood circulation. If you know what I mean, ladies. That blood circulation. Sometimes I have to hide the A-game in the bushes when I'm out walking the dog. Just because I want some sleep. (laughs) If you know what I mean, ladies. Stay on top of your A-game. Game, fellas, get your A game. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. I got a little show, something to show you, like I usually do. You know, I usually got something to show you. So we just gonna, it's real quick. Two women helped me push my car to the side. I'm gonna let it play. Two again. women offered all these men walking by. See, that's why we be talking shit about men, because y'all really ain't shit. Y'all wanna know the main thing that really pissed me off, like the fact that. Two women helped me push my car to the side. Two women offered. All these men walking by. See? That's why we be talking shit about men. Because y'all really ain't shit. Y'all want to know the main thing that really pissed me off? Like, the fact that two women helped me push my car to the side. Two women offered. All these men walking by. See? That's why we be talking shit about men, because y'all really ain't shit. Right? Wasn't that excellent? I had to let it play a couple of times. It's really short. You might miss it. My apologies for the little profanity that's in it. But there was a guy in a crack. So, listen. She's mad because something happened to her car, and the men walked past her. And it was women who had to offer to help her push her car to the side. First of all, I know car troubles happen, but stop driving them hoopties. Second of all, you're equal, so the men believe you. See, y'all fought for this. You fought for this, but this is the illogic pattern of a gyno crack. This is why I always say you're at war with your real nature versus your gynocratic teaching. Because the nature of a woman of a woman is that you want this from a man. She wanted problem solving and protection in that situation from men temporarily. Temporary problem solving, which would have been to push the car to the side. Temporary protection, maybe stand with her as she calls someone or whatever the case may be. Real temporary. But see, that's the nature of a woman. Women want, even if it's just situational, we want one or two of the four Ps or something like that from the men around us. And it can be situational. Men don't always have to stay responsible for you for the rest of your life. But they only do that with women. See, you spent the last 60 years telling boys and telling men that 
and you were equal. That you could do anything they could do, you could do better. That you didn't need them. That you didn't need, you didn't want them. They didn't have anything to give you that you couldn't give yourself. See, you managed to convince them of it. That's the problem that you're having. You managed to actually convince the larger group of men that you didn't need them. So now they're acting as if what? You don't need them. So they're not going to be anywhere offering you four peas, two peas, five peas, six peas, eight peas, a couple peas. They ain't going to be able to, they're not going to be willing to offer you anything, ma'am, because you don't need them, right? They not ish. You don't respect them. This is why you talk crap about them. All of these things. But when something happened to you and you felt entitled to the help and to the assistance and to the masculine energy of men you didn't know and men that really are not responsible for you, you felt slighted because they did what they didn't do you wrong. They did what they would have done to anybody that they saw as equal. Because if a man's car had broken down and another man walked by and saw that the two or three men was already dealing with it, he might not stop. But see, here's the tricky thing about it. Men have, will have brotherhood. So if a man had a saw a man with a car broke down, he probably say, hey, bro, what's going on? You all right? Because at least with the other man, he can have some camaraderie and brotherhood. With you, he don't know what he's going to get. See, the society set it up. The society set you up, gynocrat. It set you up. Because you're such a threat now that they don't want to have nothing to do with you. He can come over there and help you and, and be slapped with some type of charge or something like that. If uh, let's say the guy come help you because he think you're pretty. So he help you, but he also flirts with you while he's at it. If you don't like him, you will have something to say about it and not just to him. You would call yourself, tell some sort of authority that he doing something to you, harassing you or something. See, you're a threat. You're a threat. You're a threat. Even to men that you don't know personally because the society gave you a threat and only give you a threat, you readily use it and you use it often. So the men are not inclined anymore to give you anything. See, 10, 20, 20 years ago, even 10, men would have stopped. See, I still get men to stop for me. If they see anything going on, just like last winter, my car got stuck in the back. I was trying to pull out. I thought I had shoveled it good enough, but apparently I didn't. And I was trying to pull out because we were going to go run to the store and come back. Car got stuck. The two young men that's in, that was in the building, I did not ask. Two young men came out of their house and shoveled me out without me asking. These boys, these was young men. They weren't trying to flirt with me. They weren't trying to get with me. They weren't trying to help me because they thought I was pretty. I was old enough to be his mama. That wasn't why he did it. He did it because he was being chivalrous to a feminine woman. I wasn't running around the building masculine. So he saw femininity. Even as a young man, he saw femininity. He saw I wasn't going to be able to get out of it without a man. So he came down and enlisted his brother to come down. I paid them. I paid them a good little uh, price for that because they didn't have to do that. But the point is, I was able to get the assistance. I was able to get the problem solving. Out of two young men. 
that really didn't know me aside from passing, you know, passing by in and out of the building. Y'all can't get me in to help you in a dire situation because you're gynocrats and they perceive threat from you. They don't know what they're going to get out of it. Probably something detrimental because you've conditioned the men to believe that you are a threat to them. So now they believe it. Now you don't like it. <laughs> Boop, too bad. Too bad, so sad that you don't like it now. This is what you fought for. This is what your foremothers fought for. This is what they mammy fought, fought for. So that they could be equal and toe to toe and shoulder to shoulder and elbow to elbow with men in the society. So now men see you that way. They see you as little dudes that can handle your own business. That's what they see. They don't see women that need them. Because you've done what? You've told them for how many generations you'll need them? How many generations you told them you'll need them? Hell you. Okay, so now they believe it. I don't need to help her because she doesn't need me. She told me that. I've heard that so many times in my life that women, particularly black women, do not need me. See, other, other ethnicities and races of women don't say that. But black women always say it. So when they see a black woman in trouble, they don't really come to a rescue because why? You said you don't need me. You repeated that like a mantra, like a prayer. So now the gods have answered and you don't need me. So I don't feel inclined to give you any assistance because you don't respect the assistance. You don't respect the man that it come from. You don't respect any portion of my masculinity. You might, you liable to turn right around and cuss me out. I don't know what you gonna do. That's the that's literally the story of the frog and the scorpion. I helped you, then you stung me. So no. I never come over there and help you and then get bit for my good intentions, trying to be a good Samaritan with you. You say you don't need men, the men believe you. You say you're equal to the men, the men believe you. So now deal with it. Now you got to deal with it. Now you have to go along with it. You have to live your life with the fact that you have to stand on that. See, that's the whole point. See, now that the men are behaving in such a way where they believe what you said, now you got to stand on what you said. And that's your problem because gynocrats don't never know how to stand on nothing that they say because it's always a flip flop, a back and forth, a here and a there. So, you know, you don't want to stand on that when it's time for you to really stand on that. You don't want to stand on not needing a man when it comes time for you to actually need one. And then he say, no, nah, you don't need me. And then you stand on that. When he finally said, you know, I remember when you said you don't need me. Remember that? Remember that? So now I ain't got to help you. Now I don't feel any social obligation because me and used to feel a social obligation. They no longer feel it because you beat it out of them. You did that to yourself, gynocrats. You let the gynocracy system tell you, you to tell your man you didn't need him. Now you've come to a point where you've said it so much. They said, well, okay. Got the message. Now you don't like that outcome. Oh, you don't want to marry us? Got it. Oh, you want to take our kids away from us? Got it. We won't, we won't give you any. You want to take us for all that we have after we marry and take care of you? Then you want to take us for what we have in a divorce? Fine, I won't marry you. Got it. Got it. So no use in crying now. No use in crying now. 
about what the men won't do. Because you told them to stop doing it. You, you, the, a gynocrat always wanted an obedient man. Now you have them. You told them to stop. And they stopped. You told them to stop flirting with you. They did. You told them to stop coming on to you and it's creepy. They stopped. You told them that you didn't need them. So they stopped offering help because you don't need them. Remember? They just making you stand on what you said. And you grown, right? You a grown little man, right? So you should be able to stand on your own too. That's what you tell them. That you can stand on your own two feet, right? So stand on your own two feet. See, the solution to this issue would be that you are going to have to stop with the nonsense. In other words, you're going to have to knock it off. After you're done knocking it off, you're going to have to try to increase your value as a woman. Going from personal market value to belonging market value, friendship, sexual, and then marriage market value. And then you got to get your life together with the 10 life values. After you get your life together from with the 10 life values from ranging from spiritual to wealth, then you got to be able to have some followership because you're going to have to follow some system order and structure. And then after you do all of that, you're going to have to be able to pass the vetting process. You're going to have to be able to be worth time, toll, not be trouble and not be threat. And after you do all of that, then you better hope some man want to give you these. And it's a long hope. And you can blame your auntie, your mama, her mama, and her mama for all that hard work you got to do. First of all, because they failed and dropped the ball to not teach you your femininity, to teach you that you had to do that work. They taught you the actual opposite, that you did not have any work to do, and that your very existence with a vagina was all that you needed. Lies. Okay? Lies. They lied to you. They spent all that time before you was born telling every man that they know to kiss they acabaca and they soda cracker because they didn't need him, didn't want him, didn't need him, didn't want him, didn't need him, and didn't want him. Now you got to deal with a generation of men that believe that. Oh, she don't need me and he don't want me. So I don't have to do anything. I feel no obligation or no social pressure to provide her with anything at all at any time. So now you got to do all of that work that I just said to convince one man, not all of them, that you're worth it. Good luck. Good luck with that. So the question on the table is, are you going to do that work? The other question on the table is, how do you like your equality? You don't like your equality? You don't like your equality? It don't taste good? The equality pie don't taste good. I thought the equality pie was sweet. It don't taste good. Oh, mama, sorry. Hmm. Eat up. Eat your little intersectionality pie. Mm -hmm. Mutton. Right. Because you fought for that pie. So now you got to eat every piece of it. I want the pie plate clean. The pie plate got to be clean when you done. And if the pie is nasty, blame your mother. And the next man that helps you, that gives you any of them four peas, thank him for it and tell him that you needed it and that you appreciate having it. He might be inclined to give it to you again. Might. So that's my advice for you. Be worthy. And then pray. Okay. So sound off in the comment section. Right. Do you like your equality? 
That's a legit question. Do you like your equality now? You fought for it. Do you like it? Do you like the results? And if you don't like the results, what are you going to do to change the results? Again, sound off in the comment section. I would love to hear everybody's thoughts. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I am the Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimson Knights. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.